Hey guys, it's Jake from Medawani and I'm here with Tommy Karevic from Camelot. Tommy, how are you going, man? Everything is fine here. It's very warm in Sweden at the moment, so everyone is suffering, but yeah, it's, it's going good. Yeah, nice. And we're here to talk about the Australian tour that you guys are uh, coming down on. So it's been five years, but you're finally returning to the land down under. How excited is the band to be coming back? Oh, it's it's really exciting. I, I loved being in uh, Australia last time. It was a it was one of those places I've always wanted to go, and um, and finally I got the chance to go, and also with playing shows in front of uh, uh, the Australian crowd. So it was awesome. <clears throat> I really enjoyed it, and we were all super psyched. Yeah, nice. And I've noticed that Camelot as a band is a band that is one of those ones which. Uh, especially in my feed it keeps popping up fans requesting um australian tours and that sort of thing from you all the time um, across the social media so you guys obviously have a very vocal following down here how important are the australian fans to the band well it's very important i would say it's uh, it's not it's not very uh, very many bands that can actually afford coming to, to australia and, and uh, and playing uh, on your beautiful continent, it, it's a it's a, a privilege that I, I see that we have, you know. And and of course, you know, all every part of the world is important to Camelot. But but uh, for us to be able to come to Australia, it's such a beautiful place, and play our music, uh, it's just it's very exotic first and foremost because it's not happening all the time. And um, uh, I just remember last time. When we were there, um, it was it was really, yeah, you know, for me as a Swede to travel twenty four hours to, to to play somewhere, you would think that it would be super different, you know, when you come to to this place. It's so far from home, but it was, everyone is just so it just feels very homey, you know. Everyone is so nice and and friendly and and kind of kind of like in Sweden, but just a little more open minded, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, nice. So, you guys are obviously coming down touring in support of your latest album, so that's great. Obviously, there's going to be a large portion of the set list dedicated to those newer songs, and I know I've seen you mention before how difficult it is to pick set lists for shows, but how are you guys going to attack that coming down to Australia when you, you've got that five-year absence? I do... You know, we, we have, we're going to have a, a set list that we're going to play now for the for the tours coming up, and and also for the last tour, and and which works really good. You know, it's a, it's a mixture. Of course, you always have to play new songs with the new um, album, and and uh, like three, four, maybe five songs from the new album. But but the rest will be uh, songs that we know work live and and that we love to play. You know, it doesn't make sense for us to play songs. Uh, that no one knows or that maybe five or six people in the audience know um, where we have those songs that like 80-90% go, go nuts about so so that's we always try to you know have a good pacing a good uh, uh, you know feel to to the songs and the set list and, and uh, try to feel what song works what song doesn't work and, and then just make a set list of it yeah nice so I get I was still on the Australian tour. Last time the band came down, you came down with Alyssa White Glutz from, uh, well, back then it was The Agonist and now obviously Arch Enemy um, to do the female vocals on the tracks. Do you guys have something similar planned this time or is there any surprises in store for the Australian fans on these shows? Um, for sure. I mean, it's uh, we have... Um, uh, a surprise <laughs> for the Australian fans, and which is going to feel very, very. Uh, actually, I don't know if, if it's uh, official yet, but we're going to have Lauren Hart for uh, for uh, guest vocals, and she's you know from the band uh, Once Human, and she's from Australia, so she's a, a home girl, basically. Yeah, nice. So you guys have had some time now to tour with your new drummer, Johan Nunes, following the departure of Casey earlier this year. Has the dynamic on, cha on stage changed that much with a new face sitting behind the drum kit? Well, 
uh, we, we haven't had any, you know, last tour was actually Alex Landenberg that played because uh, Johan hurt his foot in the beginning in the rehearsals. So, uh, so it was Alex Landenberg from Rhapsody of Fire and uh, uh, Syrah that, that jumped in and did the tour with us. Also, he's going to do the festival, so we haven't had the chance to play with Johan much, to be honest. Um, so, um, uh, we'll see, we'll see uh, how that thing is going, but, uh, but uh, for now it's going to be Alex Landenberg behind the drums. Okay, okay. So, I want to talk about your vocal delivery now, and you are a really remarkable vocalist, and I quite often feel like your particular style of singing and vocal delivery is you're you're very effective but i feel like it's quite understated at, at times where you might be able to potentially reach those higher limits but you sort of stay a bit restrained is is that a conscious choice or is it just a positive side effect from the way that you handle your vocals mm, well it, it, it's a, I guess it's a lot of things, you know. Uh, when I do when I do vocals or write vocals for Seventh Wonder, I don't have any restrictions at all. I can do exactly what I want, and I don't have to play live so much, you know. Uh, so it's a different thing when you write for something you know you're going to play a lot live. Because if you write like close to your limit of what you actually can handle on a good day, um, it's it's very it isn't very easy to do it every night for one and a half to two hours. Uh, if you have a cold, if you have something going on, it's uh, it's going to be tough for you to, to live up to your to people's expectations, right? So so for Camelot, we, we tour a lot. We play a lot of shows. So with lack of sleep, lack of food, lack of um, energy, uh, from sleeping in a bus or whatever it can be, you know, having a cold on tour, it's uh, it's, it's just a smarter thing to try not to, to, to be on the limit of what you can handle or just above the limit, you know, because maybe on a good day you can really, you can, you can hammer it out perfectly, but, but on a bad day it's going to sound not so good. Yeah, and that, that makes a lot of sense, but I feel like it also fits in really well with the particular style of music that Camelot plays um, as well like you your your vocals you you sort of don't really need to uh, overextend yourself in a lot of those songs um, I guess I was more so just curious as to why it sort of feels like you held yourself back a little bit yeah no it's it's uh, it's also the music like you say like um it has a little, this little bit of lower register, more theatrical, maybe not the old power metal style, you know, the, that um, uh, that was there in the beginning that we try to kind of move away from a little bit, or at least I try to move away, because I like, I like pop music and I like uh, uh, modern music, and but not so much power metal anymore. Uh, so, so I tend to, tend to, you know, Try to write melodies that are nice and exquisite, but without having to um, uh, put my balls in a drawer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it's really nice. I mean, I I, I love, like uh, uh, belting it out at, at at times, you know. But you can't do it all the time, and I, and I it's actually not to my own liking. Yeah, fair enough. I guess. One thing I've always found interesting about Camelot and uh, I guess how unique you guys are as a group is that you're all very well established individual artists in your own right and you're all involved in a lot of other projects. So you've obviously, as you mentioned before, you've got your involvement with Seventh Wonder. Oliver seems like he's always in demand as a very strong touring member of a lot of bands. Johan, obviously, he's only just joined the band, but at this stage, I believe he's still in Firewind. You're all, like you, you've all got these other projects going on, and you're all very geographically dispersed. So, how difficult is it in organising? Well, firstly, these sorts of tours so that they don't clash with uh, each of your other projects and things that might be going on. And how how difficult is it to try and come together to practice? 
Well, practice is, uh, we can start there. Practice is not uh, happening so much, except for uh, now with Joel and we had a couple of days practicing before, you know, to get a feel. Uh, but usually we, we do our own homework and, and uh, practice a lot, a lot at home before the tour. And then we kind of, uh, we might practice once or, or twice before the tour. Uh, so we just meet up, you know, before everything starts and, and go through the sets and make sure we have a, what we need uh, but uh, yeah I mean it's not everyone just travels and, and I'm not the one booking the the, the, tr the the trips and everything so for me it's easy I just go you know I just uh, make sure to be on time wherever we go and it's always someone has to travel you know I have to travel to the, to the states or Canada and they have to travel to to um, uh, Europe, so um, yeah, I mean it's, it's it's of course a lot of work to make everything like the logistics and everything work. It's a uh, crazy work actually. Uh, I'm, I'm just glad I don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, as I said, that I think that's one of the things that really makes Camelot as a band unique is that you you are all scattered about across the world, and I know that it's a lot easier these days with. Um, like the recording process and that is that you can do your parts and then submit it but the fact that you guys can still continue to come together and perform and still be considered uh, like one of those very strong and uh, very reputable bands is you know, remarkable yeah I, and, and uh, as I said it doesn't uh, it's uh, it doesn't come easy when it's, uh, it's a lot of money a lot of time spent I know, I know Thomas is working really hard to uh, to have this uh, like this uh, uh, tank rolling all the time and, and uh, I, I feel I appreciate his work a lot when it comes to that because I, I don't think I could do it yeah definitely and you know, I've got a bit of a personal sort of question for you and it sort of ties back into the last question so it it is a little bit related, but Seventh Wonder, your other band, released an album this year as well. Have you got touring plans in relation uh, to them at the moment, or is it purely focused on Camelot and the Shadow Theory? Uh, well, as, as everyone in Camelot, Camelot has to be the first priority, so everything Seventh Wonder related is going to be on time on times or time slots where, where nothing happens with Camelot. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, the, the album, uh, Tiara, is going uh, gonna to come out in October. So it hasn't come out yet, but it will come out in October. And, yeah, we, we are planning to play a few selected shows here and there. And, and uh, uh, we, we have a really exciting show to, to announce. Uh, once that is okay to announce too, I can't say anything right now, but but we have a couple of shows in the making and, and it's going to be fun, it's going to be a lot of fun because we haven't played since uh, since uh, Prague Power in 2014, so uh, uh, yeah, we're all looking very much forward to, to whatever shows we, we can get together and play. Yeah, nice, and as you said, obviously... Uh, in those down times when Camelot's not doing anything. So, got one more question for you, Tommy, and it's a real easy, real simple, basic one. Do you have any messages that you wanted to share with Camelot fans around the world and in Australia for your upcoming shows? Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, we're super excited to come and play Australia. It's uh, it's very exotic for for all of us. And last time we were really pleasant to, pleasantly surprised that everyone came out and supported us. Uh, and uh, so come out and, and, and just have a have fun and and uh, chat a little bit with us and just have a good time. And uh, I, I'm I'm pretty positive that we can make this happen also in the future. Wonderful. Tommy, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day now.